Hi, my name is Michael with Iconassist. Today we'll be doing a real-time workflow video communicating how to shoot 360 product photography on pure white backgrounds when working with a LumiPad lighting kit and an Iconassist 360 photography turntable. Um, I've done a quick pre-setup as you can see here. The LumiPad lighting kit in, consists of a large backlight panel. Um, they're available in three different sizes. Each will include the backlight panel and two front tower lights. And this one that you're seeing here is our medium size. Uh, we do have a larger size as well as a smaller size. Um, we will also be working with our silver mid turntable and a Canon Rebel camera. So kind of to communicate things, I've got a white object. White objects are typically very hard to photograph, especially on the pure white backgrounds. And I really wanted to put this lighting kit to the test in this video just to communicate how powerful it is. So let's just quickly place this object into what looks like the center of the turntable. Uh, as it'll be easier to kind of communicate the lighting as we walk through this video and I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the backlight panel and this is just a twist dimmer knob as you can see here um, by twisting the knob left and right it you kind of adjust how much light uh, the panel is gonna emit um, we do have our object it's about uh, 12 inches from the backlight panel and we're also going to turn on our two front tower lights And let's get into a little bit about the, uh, obviously the lighting. Um, we've talked about the backlight panel. These two front tower lights, um, just to kind of go through, they are first and foremost adjustable via dimming. Um, you can also adjust the color temperature. Um, so I can change the mode and change it from 3200 Kelvin to 5600 Kelvin. The nice thing about these lights too is that we do provide you a wireless remote. Uh, it's got range up to about 100 feet. Um, so you will be able to adjust your color temperature and lighting. For instance, I will adjust the color temperature on both these lights from 5600 Kelvin down to 3200 Kelvin. You're gonna see it's emitting a much yellower light. And I'll increase that back up to 5600. Most of our users will shoot between 5,000 and 5,600 Kelvin, however, it's very beneficial. Some objects might benefit more from a lower light temperature, such as gold or yellow type objects. Um, and then we can actually change the mode on this to adjust the dimming. And we're gonna see as I change the value on the remote, um, we are changing the dimming value. And again, that is how much light these panels are emitting. Um, these are about 4,000 uh, luminous flux, meaning that they can emit a lot of light. Um, we're going to have a lot of benefit from these lights being on light stands rather than kind of a traditional light box where your lighting is in fixed position and you don't really have any control. You're getting really flat product fo photographs. Um, with this, you're going to have a lot of control, obviously, over um, the light dimming, the color temperature, as well as position of the light, um, height of the light. These are adjustable. And then the last thing you're going to see is we do have tilt and pardon me. One more thing I should mention is you might be able to see this from the side here is these lights do have barn doors so you can start to help really shape your light and kind of uh, concentrate it on your subject. So you're going to be able to get much higher quality photographs than you typically would in a kind of in a product photography light box. So we've connected our camera now and we are going to walk into the software and it'll be a little bit easier to communicate lighting adjustments um, when we're looking through the software rather than you guys kind of looking behind the uh, the camera lens here. So let's swap on over to the software. So we will launch the Shutterstream 360 software. And the first thing we're gonna notice here, that's a live view. That's actually a live view of what the camera sees as you can probably see my hand going back and forth in front of the subject. The other thing in the top right hand corner here is that's one of the barn doors from the light, so I'm just going to move that in to keep it kind of out of the frame there. And first thing is, and as we can see, it's very blurry. I'm going to go into my manual focus mode, zoom in one to one, and start to make some adjustments. And as we can see there, I've brought it pretty well into focus. Looks pretty good right there. And we're going to use that as our fixed focal point. Um, the next thing we're going to see, it looks a little bit dark. Um, obviously, we can adjust our lights um, accordingly with our dimming, and uh, we can go ahead and do that using the remote here. So let me just increase our dimming on both lights, and as we're going to see in the preview, everything kind of come 
into pretty color accurate. Uh, that value is at 75 right now. Um, I'm going to drop that down probably to about 50. And that's looking quite good right there. Let me just drop it a tad more. Pretty good there. We're not blowing out any colors whatsoever and it uh, looks very color accurate. The other thing that we could have done here is obviously adjust our camera settings. So this is our shutter speed. I can change that so instead of one tenth of a second, it's going to be 0 0.4 of a second. And as we make changes to these camera settings, we're going to see the exposure change in real time on our monitor screen. So we'll revert back to one tenth and that all looks pretty good right there. Um, if we like this profile, we can actually save that inside of the software. I could just call this Mike's profile. So that'll be retained um, every time or maybe I need to come back and you know access. We could have multiple different uh, kind of uh, profiles in, through the software um, just for repetitive and kind of consistent results based on maybe it's a color type or, or something along those lines. So that's looking pretty good there. What I'm going to do here is just do a quick little snap. But first, I want to crop my subject. I'm going to say only shoot an image of what's inside this area that I just defined. We'll hit the snap button. It's going to capture and upload that image. And we can see there a pretty good quality result. Um, very good quality result, actually. So um, let's go back to our live view. And we're going to start to see a couple things here. Um, now, we don't really need to make adjustments to our lighting here. Um, I could, again, if I wanted to, maybe if I look at this image right here and I start to see there's really no problems whatsoever with this, but maybe I want to add a little bit more light to kind of the top of his head there. Um, let me just go ahead and increase the height and move my light in just a tad, and I'm just going to tilt down my light here. And we're probably not going to see much of a change, but let's just snap another image here. And you're probably going to notice it maybe down here kind of on the, the right side of the subject, as we can see there. So that's a real benefit of being able to adjust your lights. So maybe this is going to be your optimal setting. And this will be a typical setting with just the light on the left, the light on the right, and maybe they're just staggered at different heights. So... Now what I want to do here is go back into my live view and I want to enter into the 360 shooting mode. Now this is where we're going to kind of predefine all our 360 product photography settings that we're going to use. And the very first one is going to be to pre-rotate our turntable to ensure our subject is spinning in the center of the turntable. Now when I put this object in the center of the turntable, I didn't really kind of eye it too well. So let me just take a kind of an overhead view and make a little slight adjustment here and that's looking pretty good there so we're going to go ahead and do a pre-rotation we can define to spin one 360 rotation by clicking this one arrow and then as long as 360 is defined it's going to automatically capture or sorry rotate a 360 view for us so it's looking like we did a pretty good job with our object spinning in the center of the turntable the other thing, and I don't know if you noticed, was as I rotated my turntable, I was adjusting my crop marker. Obviously, as our object rotates 360, we don't want it to fall outside of the cropped area. So that's visually, I'm just watching here to ensure that uh, our object does not fall outside of this area. So um, that's actually looking quite good there. Now what we can do is, I'm just going to delete these previous two images that I'd shot because we're going to, we don't really have a need for those anymore. And we're going to define our 360 shooting here. So I'll say I want to shoot X number of frames. Um, we typically suggest between 36 and 72 frames for jewelry and other type objects. You might want to go a bit higher. With our turntables, you have the ability to shoot upwards of 10,000 images per 360. Um, probably a lot of overkill for kind of e-commerce applications. But uh, for this demo, I'm going to enter as a custom uh, 48 frames per 360. And... The other thing I can do is choose how fast or how slow I want my turntable to spin. That's done through step width. I'm going to leave that at, uh, maybe I'll move that to one. This is kind of a wobbly guy who maybe doesn't stand up too well. Um, I'm going to shoot him in a counterclockwise rotation, as we can see denoted right here. And uh, simply from there, I'm just going to hit my start button. 
and that's going to automate the capture process in a turn stop snap workflow as images are captured they're going to be uploaded to the computer where we can actually view the results and as we can see here just how fast it is 48 frames should take probably just under two minutes All right, so we've just completed our capture of our 48 images. What we can do is go ahead and inspect these if we want. Um, I'm going to assume all is good and select all images and enter into the editing area. All right, so while in the editing area, we do have a suite of great tools that will allow you to make adjustments, achieve white backgrounds, extract the background to make it transparent. Uh, color correction, um, we're not going to dive in too deep. We do have other very good uh, videos showing these features. We're just going to kind of do the uh, the bare minimums here. So first and foremost, what we're going to do is select this eyedropper tool up here on the top right. And we're going to go ahead and scroll over top of our image. And what I can see here is if you look at this value RGB up in the top right, we're going to see that's at a value of 255, 255, 255. So essentially, we've shot this instantly on a pure white background. Probably don't need to do much adjustment at all. Um, what I could do is maybe I do want to lighten up the whites a bit. I'm just going to change. Let's do make an adjustment to our levels tool. I'm going to make the whites a tad bit whiter and the darks a tad bit darker. And that's looking pretty good there. Maybe I'll also make a slight adjustment increasing my sharpness. Uh, that will slightly increase uh, our image quality and that should probably be all that's required um, again I won't dive into everything inside of here um, it would be a long video if I did but uh, it's a very powerful suite that allows you to most importantly batch process so I've made those changes I'm actually gonna hit apply to all and through one click I can apply this to every single image in the image set All right, now that we're done our editing, we're going to go ahead and batch output these images. So let me go ahead and we're going to choose our batch save tool. I will go and select a folder from my desktop and we will use sample image set folder. We can rename this. It's going to batch rename. I'll just call it buzz and we can do some batch resizing. So obviously for my website, maybe I know I need all these at say 1200 pixels wide. We could also stamp a watermark, choose the image format output. Um, from JPEG, PNG, RAW, or TIFF. And um, when we're ready to save, we just hit OK. And again, that's going to batch rename and batch resize. All right, so what we can do is inspect that folder and just let me show you a different view here. We will show large icons and we can see there's 48 total frames. Uh, I think that would be one capture every about 7.5 degrees. And what we want to do is obviously you'll have full control to use your individual frames. Maybe you want to show still images in addition to your 360 views or you have additional usage for the still images. Note you'll have full access to those. Um, I'm going to go ahead and compose these into a 360 view using the included 360 view creator software. So I will launch that and show the folder again here. And all I want to do is batch select. So I'm going to hold shift, select the first, select the last, and drag and drop into the software. And we're going to see that's quickly going to create our 360 view using the uh, individual image set. And there we go right there is our 360 view um, I can make this smaller let me just make it a tad smaller so you can kind of see the whole all right so that's what we just created there an interactive 360 product view that is on a pure white background instantly um, this is the, again the 360 view creator this is included with the Shutterstream 360 software 
Um, everything is completely customizable from the button colors to the load bars to the spin direction to the spin rate. Um, I won't dive into that. We've got a very good video communicating that, but just understand that as much as you want to customize your 360 view to kind of match and uh, look and kind of feel the same as your website, you will have full control. Um, and we do have multiple different output options here um, from HTML5, interactive MP4, animated GIF, and MP4 video. When I'm ready to output this 360 view, I'm just going to give it a name and we'll call it Buzz360. We're going to choose our output folder. Let's go back to our desktop or sample image set. And we will just hit our save button. And within just a few minutes, we've created a WebReady 360 product view that can be dropped and embedded into our website. Um, the last thing I should mention is we don't do any branding on these 360 views. Um, so whether you're an individual, um, a professional photographer using it as a service or a business, um, there's going to be no Iconosys stamped anywhere on this. Um, and we do not have any limits from our software whatsoever. So you buy our equipment once and you create infinite 360 product views for the lifetime of your business. Um, if there's any questions, the company name is Iconosys. Um, we do have some very helpful staff, and uh, feel free to reach out. We'll be here for you. Thank you.